up my hobros? bros how are y'all doing so I've been feeling a little under the weather lately nothing major just a change of the seasons it's uh, turning it's gonna be summer here soon in uh, Thailand hard to believe here right but the hottest time of year in Thailand is April and uh, it's end of, it's March now so today's a little overcast cloudy anyways um, you know, YouTube tells you that you should try to be real with your audience and sort of, because, you know, your fans want to interact with you, they want to know about you, about your real life scenario so that they can relate to you and feel like they're part of a family, which you are. You're part of my whole bro dumpster nacho squad. But, uh, so I just wanted to give you a little bit uh, more intel about myself since a lot of you are asking I, I, I'm coming up to some milestones I think I've got 17,000 fans on Instagram and uh, now thanks to Roman and Vitaly a, a, a whole new slew of Vitaly villains have started following me and subscribing thank you for that tell your friends to also subscribe I'm gonna put out lots more content I think I might be seeing Vitaly soon hopefully um, Either way, I'll probably be going back to the States uh, within the month, I would say. And if I am there in L.A., I will definitely see Roman and Vitaly and anybody who's there. Um, as far as Natural Born Pranksters is concerned, uh, it's still in post-production. There's things going on uh, that I'm particularly not needed for right now. But it is an ongoing process, and as there are updates, I will let you know. Now, that being said, a lot of you ask me questions about the film business and things like can you give us advice about the film business how did you get started etc etc here's some free advice for you the film business in my opinion is one of the most hard the hardest uh, professions to be in it is definitely hands down the most competitive I would say even more than doctors and lawyers it's probably equivalent to uh, trying to become an astronaut and why is that it's because of the alleged fame and glory that comes with our profession although in reality it's not very glorious at all um, there are times when it is glorious of course you know I've, I've been blessed I've got to meet many celebrities I've got to work with Oscar award-winning and Emmy award-winning directors and actors and the list goes on and on and on but you know what I've spent 20 years 20 years in the business. I started as the guy who gets the coffee and answers the phone and that takes a big hit to your dignity. You have to be humble. You have to strive because you know what? There's 10,000 other people that want your position even if it is just answering the phone. It's such a competitive business because everyone wants to be in it. Everyone thinks they can be the next Spielberg or the next Tom Cruise or the next Roman Atwood. Everyone wants to do it. So it's ultra competitive and, and because of that, it's very hard to get noticed. It's hard to stick out. You hear about the success stories like Brad Pitt, for example, um, you know, who was an extra or got a, a bit part and then ended up being you know, one of the world's most famous celebrities. But those are the exceptions. So the reality is, is that the majority of working actors aren't actors at all most of the time. They're doing other jobs to feed their families or themselves. And believe me, once you have a family, gets even harder because your responsibility shifts. Now you're not just taking care of yourself. It's You have a whole family to take care of. So it gets harder as you go on. And God forbid that your spouse or your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your roommate or whatever it may be can put up with someone in the film business. You know why? Because we work minimum 12 hour days. In independent film it's more like 18 hour days. I've worked a 40 hour day once and 16 to 18 hour days, especially as a producer, are not that uncommon. So what I'm saying is, if you want it just for the glory or because it seems cool, pick another profession, believe me. Because it's gonna take two decades, in most cases, to get where I am now, and that's with hard work. You have to impress everybody. You have to play politics. You have to learn constantly. You have to constantly ask questions. Even if you're, um, you know, whatever department you want to go in, whether that's camera, makeup, 
everyone goes to the go-to, I want to be an actor, I want to be a director. Yeah, but there's a lot to learn before you can do those things. Just because you have a digital camera like this, that you, a prosumer camera you bought, doesn't mean you know the first thing about cameras, okay? Just because you shot your friends for a five-minute YouTube video doesn't mean that you're a director and actor. It's a good start. And I'm not trying to say don't do those things. Definitely do those things because you have to learn from those things. But don't get so ahead of yourself that you get an ego all of a sudden and you start calling yourself something and representing yourself as something that you're not. You know, I put in two decades. There's people that put in three or four decades. And people like them, they can say, they can call them names by what they are, by what their profession is. But even to me, I'm still learning. I learn something on every film. I've done over 60 films probably closer to 80 and each one I learned something and if not several things and you have to make connections and you have to impress people because they're gonna call you back based on what they know of you not based on your resume they don't care what you've done before they care what you do in the here and now and it's political you can't piss off somebody that you even if you don't like them or they, they, they have an ego or they do worse than you because that person may be your next job they may be the producer on the next thing. The guy who gets the coffee on this movie may be the producer on the next one or down the road or whatever. It's a very competitive industry. So what that means is uh, any singular reason why someone can find not to work with you again, they will choose it. So if you're late for your set call, um, if you do not follow directions properly, if you question your authority, remember, a film set is very much like the military. In fact, we borrowed some of our lingo and our hierarchy from the military. Now, in fear of sounding like an old man, which I am, I'm 43 to most of y'all that's old, but in the film business, that's just about uh, right where I should be for a burgeoning film career. But my point is this. Back in my day, back in my day, we flirt the frickin' this, and frickin' this and burgeon. Back in my day, um, you know, I, I started working on big studio films. The first film I worked on was Bicentennial Man, which was a hundred million dollars, maybe 110, which back then was the biggest uh, film budget. This was before Michael Bay and all that. Anyways, I digress. My point was, I started in the big studio films, mostly uh, 20th Century Fox, and I learned the hierarchy. And back then, you know, we ne we didn't go home. We didn't. We never asked to go home. First of all, we didn't go home until our supervisors went home and they didn't go home until their supervisors go home. We in fact had what we called second shift where we would shoot the movie for 12 hours and then the line producer, the production manager would come back to the office and we'd do production reports for another four or five hours. So be willing to put in the time and work, learn your craft, ask questions, especially if you want to be a director or a producer. You know why? Because you need to know about every facet. You can't properly produce or direct unless you know at least a little bit. I'm not saying you have to be a specialist in everything, especially technical stuff, but you have to know the basics in everything. You have to know what the camera guys do. You have to know what the DIT does. You have to know how long it takes for makeup. You have to know how to coach an actor or actress in a scene, how to evoke that emotion and, and get the best out of them. You have to know what uh, intimate detail, exquisite intricate, I meant, detail that a, a costume designer puts in time and how they want that to be seen on a film and you can't rush certain things. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Told you I'm not feeling well. Um, there's this age-old uh, diagram, which is a triangle, which is uh, time, money, and quality. You know, you can have, uh, you pick two, basically. If you, have, uh, if you have time and money, you'll have good quality, um, etc. But but don't expect to always have all three. If you're, at, if you're without one, you can't have them. Um, if, you ha if you don't have money, you're going to sacrifice on poor production value. If you don't have time, you're going to sacrifice on poor production value because you've rushed through things. Um, and, and then you're not going to get the quality that you deserve. Now, in independent filmmaking, a lot of times you don't have time or money, and that's okay. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that know that there's a direct correlation amongst these things and that you as a producer if you want to call, start calling yourself a producer once you've put two decades of work in then you need to understand the direct correlation of these things and those and once you understand that you can start to make the right decisions sometimes that's in time 
Sometimes that's in money and sometimes that's in quality. Sometimes you simply can't have the quality so because you don't have the money or the time and that's okay because especially if you guys are starting on YouTube. So here's some free advice from a seasoned film professional. By no means am I calling myself an expert in anything. But as far as life as experience is concerned, I was born and bred and sucked off the teat of the film set for as long as I can remember. You know, even when I was young, even in, in, in elementary school through high school, college, I was always around the art of theater, which eventually led to film and then to video in the digital era. But uh, take this advice. One, take as many jobs as you can. Okay, so it doesn't matter. You don't, especially for your first few jobs, you don't have to get paid for them. There is such a thing as interning. I'm not saying to be abused, used, and abused, but to get your foot in the door, don't, don't feel like you're above not learning on something. Do a couple of jobs for free if, if you have to. Of course, if you can get paid, get paid. But I'm saying be a set PA, be an intern, work in a production office. Nothing's, don't, don't glorify something more than the other. Don't say because, oh, I'm not out there on the set, I'm not behind the camera, I'm not with the DP, I'm not sitting next to the director, this job sucks, I gotta shovel shit, which, hey, Quentin Tarantino shoveled shit. Read his biography. He shoveled shit as a PA on a film set. He worked in a video store. The point is, you have to learn everything. You know, I learned some of the most important things I'll ever learn about filming. Where? In a fucking office. In an office. You know why? Because the guys in the office, they see or make schedules. They see or make budgets. They see memos from all the department's heads. They see memos from the 15 producers and the 30 execs and, and it's an intricate thing that you know a second AC on set or focus puller will never get the privilege of seeing that information because they weren't there to be the go-between interim of to see that stuff so don't discount anything just because it's not glamorous because listen the film business is not glamorous Ding. The film business, for the most part, is not glamorous. You know those red carpet premieres, meeting your idol, which, believe me, sometimes their celebrity idols are assholes, okay? So think about that. I'm not saying all the time. I'm saying sometimes. You can't, you can't have in your mind this idea of the film world that it's just this amazing thing. It is amazing, but it's a career. It's a career like anything else, like working on cars or flying planes or building houses or any of those things. You have to start from the bottom. You have to learn. You have to progress. You have to impress before you can call yourself a career professional. And that's my advice to you. Work on as many things as you can. It doesn't matter if it's theater, if it's your friend's video, if it's YouTube stuff. You know, it doesn't matter if you want to be an actor, learn about the camera, learn about editing. Look, actually watch a director and see what they do. They don't just sit there, you know, with this iconic megaphone, like Charlie Chaplin or something, and yell at people. It's not about that at all. It's about understanding all the cogs and wheels and works of a set and making it run smoothly and efficiently and getting the best performance of not only your actors, but your technical crew. Your DP <coughs> and your gaffer are some of the most important people on set. And they will, it's a thankless job. Only, only rarely do some DPs like Wally Fister or Faden Papa Michael get some, some of the glory that they deserve. But, uh, you know, it's, a, it's, it's pretty much a thankless job in, the, in a lot of the jobs in the industry. So don't do it for the glory. Do it for the passion. Do it because it's what you want to do. Work for free. I'm only going to tell you guys this once. I do not believe in film school. Now, does that mean I think it's a waste of time and money? No, not not exactly. Um, I do think you learn in film schools. I think certain ones are good on your resume, especially if you go to NYU for acting, something like that. Um, but my point is you will learn more in the field on a film set than you will ever learn in a film school. So is that to detract from you guys sitting in film school right now? Not at all. It's a decision you made. Go with it. Stick with it. I'm not saying that you shouldn't do it, but I'm saying if given the choice, in my opinion as a professional and many professional opinions out there, it's, it's, it's a quicker road and certainly a, a cheaper road 
to try to find work in the industry and learn and cut your teeth on film sets and you will learn all that stuff. Um, again, I'm not saying film schools are bad because you do learn a lot of stuff in film school that um, it's sort of a fast track to learning the ins and outs, the technical know-how, lighting, staging, sometimes acting, all those technical things that are very important and you do need to know. But as far as advancing your career, um, if, if, if I had a choice of spending two to four years in a film school or spending two to four years on a film set, <coughs> I would tell you without doubt, your time put on the film set is going to advance your career further. And that's just coming from me. Don't hate on me. I earned every one of these gray hairs, and I'm giving you free advice, which is practical experience over film school for sure. Work, work, work. Impress people. They want to. They, you want to keep a memory in their minds when they say, "It doesn't matter." Again, if you're getting the coffee, if you're doing the craft service, if you're answering the phones, they want to be like, "Man, what was that guy? Oh yeah, that guy Jude. Man, he was great. You should call that guy. Get him to work on your film. He's awesome." And then, you know, when you're on a film, you'll ask questions, you'll meet somebody. Maybe you want to do camera. Maybe you talk, maybe you, you won't get to talk to the DP, but you'll get to talk to the first AC, and he'll tell you his stories. People in our business love to share. They love to mentor. But the problem is, so many people want to get in our business that we're bored of just hearing this, oh, I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to get in your business. I'm excited. And then the minute it becomes like hard work and dedication, the minute you have to put in a 12-hour day, you're like, oh, I'm not going to do that. Man. I'm going to go play my Xbox. Screw that. Why do I have to be 12 hours on a set? Well, you know what? You don't have to be 12 hours on a set because i got 5,000 other people that want your job. So keep that in mind. Film is for passionate professionals only. The rest of you, keep it as a hobby. That's fine. I'm not saying that. Film all you want. I love you guys. I'll watch your stuff. I'll support you. But for those of you who are serious about the film business or video or theater, treat it as you would any other profession. And one day, trust me, one day you will have a skill set that is incomparable. You will be paid for that skill set. You will be appreciated, rewarded for that skill set because you, my friends, will be a filmmaker. All right, that's it. Coming from the Hobro's heart, much love and respect to all y'all. Make sure you subscribe. Tell your friends about me. Hey, I'm at Judas Walk on Instagram and Twitter. I'm a Hobro Nation. I'm just telling it as a real. As it is, I'm real. I'm a struggling filmmaker, an actor, a writer, a producer. But you know what? It's all a struggle. Keep that in mind. Love you guys. Peace.